Hey folks, uh, got a bit of a surprise for you today. I have uh, a young gentleman called Craig with me today from Record Power, and Craig's going to show me how to use uh, my bandsaw properly. So, Craig, if you want to just, uh, this is Craig, uh, and say so we're going to change a blade today. Um, I've got a few blades for the bandsaw, uh, and then we're going to set it up and get it positioned properly. And uh, maybe, what else can we show? And show how to tension a blade correctly. Yes, yeah, so the we, guides in position. Yes, yeah, so we could show how to tension the blades uh, and just bits and pieces on my bandsaw, really. So uh, let's do that. So this is my uh, record power bandsaw, uh, and as some of you know, I've got the BS four hundred. So this is the is this the daddy of the bandsaws or on the it? record power type uh, machines? You've got up to a BS four hundred, and then after that, we go to the start right machinery, which goes more industrial. Okay, so, so this is more still still in the hobby range, is it? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So this semi-professional. Yeah, we're going to change the blade in this, um, and uh, Craig will show us how to do that. So all we're going to do first of all is just get the doors open, so we can see just inside, and then it's quite a quick operation really, because we've got a quick release mechanism on the back behind the top box that we just release, and what that does is it just drops the top wheel straight down which takes all the tension off the blade and if we just make sure that the rise and fall mechanism is just below the crown of the wheel it then allows us to bring the blade through the slots around and what you've seen there is the, the actual bar which stops mm. the blade flying off and it's just a safety mechanism really and it also makes sure that the split in the table stays level when it's tightened up so once that's out of the way the blade can come straight off and there you've got the, the old blade waiting for the new one to go on. Brilliant, it's nice and easy to take that off. <laughs> yeah. This is putting it back on now. <laughs> well, if you want to put this one on, I'll put this one away just to fold the blade up. We can just push it away from you and fold across. Oh, nice and, and easy. folds the blade so it's out of the way. We can look at a new blade then. The one we're going to put on is a 3 8 6 and it's a skip tooth. And you can see here the, the set on the, the teeth. If we turn it sideways, we might be able to pick that up where we're going left, right, left, right, which is the set. But the skip tooth is left, right, and then one in the centre, and that clears the timber away. So it, for the general wood turn, it gives a nice clean cut. Right. Now, the other thing that you want to remember when you're choosing a blade is obviously the narrower the blade, the more shape work we can do, whereas the wider blades are for the straight cutting. So once we open this blade up, we check that it's not being spun inside out, so the teeth are facing down. What we can do is just slide straight back in the slots that we used earlier, over the top, through the slot. And that just fits in there. Just make sure we're located on the top and the bottom. And once that's in position, there's still a lot of movement in the blade. So then we just go back to the quick release mechanism that we've had before and we just bring that back in action and it's going to put us the tension back on there. We haven't adjusted the guides yet at this point because what we want to do is get them clear and out of the way because what we were explaining before about the set on the teeth we want to protect this set to make sure we get a clean cut all the way through. So the guides are this top section here so you have to release that well this one is the release for locking and oh, loosening off that for the main, for the, the right yeah okay, the and right, then we've yeah. got the rise and fall mechanism that allows you to put in a different position for the different depths of cut that we're going to do okay so the so. guides are on the top which are easy to see and adjust at these this part here now if we loosen off the locking nut on that and turn this brings it out same on the left side, brings it out. Then on the, the rear one, it's an Allen key setup where we just loosen off and we can push that back out of the way. So we're just setting up the, uh, we're just gonna set up the actual blade now. Um, underneath here, we've got some, uh, some guards that uh, protect you from chopping your hand off. Basically. Stopping you getting your hand into yeah. the blade at so all. So it's a nice safety position but 
obviously for video reasons we're going to remove them so we can see how to set these guides. So we're just taking the blade, the guards off um, just so that you can see us setting these up because we need to set up these guides here and then we also need to set these ones up here as well. First of all we just loosen off on this one this one these will come away and then the rear one here obviously is adjustable with the knob on the back there where we can twist it so you have to loosen these guides every time you change the blade do you? or depending on the blade the that you, if you're changing blade. size for size uh, obviously okay. the blade is going to track in a different position yeah okay on the wheel so yeah, you adjust yeah, yeah. it to suit so because it's a different size blade, blade yeah. then we're having to change the settings of the, yeah. the angles and things. So we move these out of the way. So we're looking for the correct tension on the, on the blade and we're looking to track it as central as we can on the wheel. So you can see we're quite central there. Yeah. And if it's not central, in the middle of the bike, which is that knob there, yeah. We can adjust this forward or bike, which brings this wheel forward or bike. Right, okay. And allows you to strike each individual blade to get it as central as you can. Okay. Because you want a nice balanced machine. Yeah. I mean, I've heard some people say that they'll always track the gully to the teeth in the centre. Hmm. So then you're not moving the guides as much each time. And that's okay if you've got so the narrower blades on. But when you come to use the wider blades, you don't want overhang at the hmm. bike so that you've got the gullet in the, the centre of the wheel. No. Uh, so it's a bit so it's of both, be tracking, really. The blade's got to be tracking in the centre As central the as possible on the top wheel, yeah. Okay. So we can show that by, if we just rotate it by hand, as it's going round, we're staying central, so we're in the right position at the moment. Mm. Then the other one we've got here is a blade tension indicator. So that's going to tell us what position we need to be in for each blade tension. Yeah. Oh, okay, so does that, does that represent each blade? Yes, oh, but right. you need to, obviously it needs to be calibrated to suit the blades to start with. It is a little bit mm. complicated, but a quick fix to find out what the blade tension should be. Mm. If you go to the, the bottom sort of, of the wheel and go directly across, mm. and we just push in, we want about quarter inch movement from centre with a nice bit of tension on. If I were to tension that another quarter turn, it's not going to make a lot of difference, but you can just feel the tension coming mm -hmm. in. Okay. So it's about a quarter inch from centre. Yeah. It's about the right tension on, on the blade to feel it, yeah. So it's just a feel thing, and this is not a, you don't need to make sure this goes to a certain... You don't need to, because it is adjustable on here. The, the thing what you've got to remember is the manufacturers, when we're actually welding the blades up, they'll go to the nearest tooth configuration, so there is a slight difference in length of blade that it's allowed for about a quarter of an inch. Right, okay. So if you've got a 6 TPI, the length of this blade is 133 inch. Mm. If you've got a blade tooth configuration of a 6 TPI, obviously you might go to the nearest tool so you might lose 3 or 4 mil, or you might gain 3 or 4 mil. Mm. It doesn't really matter because the blade tension will compensate for that. Mm, okay. So the best, one of the best tests is just to check the blade that's got a nice bit of tension on there. We, like I say, you can adjust the calibration of that to make it right but then at this point then we move the guides out of the way above and we move the guides out of the way below at this point now I would run the machine so that the blades actually going to track into position because we've only turned it by hand whereas now it's going to go around at sort of 880 meters a minute mm. um, and balance it through so we can just start that up Make sure that we're in nice and smooth. Make sure we're out of the way. Once the blade's found its position, the clicking noise you hear is the brake coming in at brake, the back. Yeah, yeah. And that'll stop the blade under the 10 seconds that's required. It's a mechanical brake at the back, so it squeezes the, the motor to a stop so it doesn't do any damage. So once we've done that, we can then look, we know that the blade's tracking in the right position then, so now we can look at putting the guides in the right position. If you look here, at the moment they're just a little bit too far forward and if we use the guides they're going to catch on the set. As I explained earlier, the set is, is this set up here that you can see. 
Yeah. And if we're going to flatten one side, one side becomes stronger. So when you try and push your timbers through, it's going to pull to the strong side. Mm. So we want to make sure we're getting it plenty of support. So we just adjust on the back end. And we can take the guides further back. So we're looking at the back off of the blade and we can lock off. So now we're clear of the set. So then we can adjust in. And all we want really on this one, we just want it so we can just see light or what our class is cigarette paper, just through so it's not touching the blade on the side, but it's going to support it when it needs it. Again, same on this side. Not if you'll be able to see that just coming up through the guard. And we're just going to get that so it's just in position and then we can lock off again. And we do that both sides and we also do it on the, the thrust bearing. So we're just going to come up so we're just not touching and then we can lock off. So the idea behind the guides are to support the blade as and when it's needed and not to run on it. If the bearings are running on the blade you're going to generate heat through it, heat goes into the blade and it's going to damage the blade at the end of the day and what we're trying to do is protect it so that we can get nice cuts mm. long duration. So once we've done that we're going to do exactly the same on the bottom guides where we can bring it in, the rear and the two sides. But again if you look there these are two for because you've had that other blade on there's a, there's a knob at the back there for the back bearing, this back bearing. So this one locks off for taking them back and forward. See that? Yeah, right, yeah. So we can have that in the right position again, and then we can lock off. We're just a bit tight for space, aren't we? So you've got another another Allen key there, position. Right, Allen key. And we can take that one front and back. So we just loosen off that one. If we turn that knob there, we can take it, see how we can go back with that one and forward. Just get it in the right position, and then we can lock off again. And we'll just clear that. Again, from that's the front just, one. That's running on the bearing there, is it? That's it's just, just, it's just clear again. We'll just have it clear again as it's still touching. So it's not, not touching the bearing? Yeah. So it's just clear. Just clear the bearing. And the same on the, uh, the bottom ones on the sides again. Just lock these off. Few thou, clear. Lock off. So like I said, the main thing that I want to get across to you is that, that it's there to support the blade when it needs it. Mm. And not to yeah, actually not, run on them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then obviously once we've set the machine up, it's just a test cut really. And we're just going to start the machine up and just try a straight cut. You can see how we're, we're nice and straight on the cut. We're a nice straight cut. Now, if it doesn't do that on the first cut after we've set the machine up, that's the case where we really want to stop and have a look what's uh, setting correctly. Because we've got a couple of checks that we do before we sort of carry on. Now, the first one, you can find me straight edge of my rule. What we'd already checked before we did the cut is that the fence is actually sitting square to the table. And we've checked that the, the blade is sitting square to the table. And then we've checked that the fence is actually square to the machine slot in the table, so it's running parallel along here. But then the most important one, we've got to make sure that the blade is actually sitting parallel or square to the slot in the blade as well. Because the biggest mistake people make is when they've set the table or bolted the table on, it's slightly out at an angle like this and it only takes a few degrees. And what you end up doing is when you offer your fence up to the blade, you're going to be trapping the timber as you can see whereas if it's nice and square 
we're actually going to be running along and making sure we've got a nice square cut through the blade as we're doing it. So that's one of the most important adjustments that you can do. So just to recap, we've got the correct tension on, we've got the guides in the right position, above and below, just under here. We've got the fence square, we've got the fence running parallel, and we've got the actual table running square to the blade across the face. Now we can put a wider blade on to check this with more accuracy. Obviously the narrow blades is a little bit out. If it, all that's been done and the machine is cutting nice and square and there's no reason then why you can't cut your ball blanks, your shapes and everything else like I said we've put a 386 blade on here and what that allows you to do is actually follow shapes and line as well <laughs> I like that, that's brilliant. That See, is. the thing is with it, with that, if you want to carry on filming, you can do. Yeah, the like advantage, that. like we were saying, the white, the narrower the blade, so this is a 3 8 we can go down to a quarter and still retain the strength in the blade. 3 8 we've got the 5 8 half inch. As we're going wider, there's going to be more resistance on the back edge. Mm. So that's when it's going to do your straighter cuts when you're doing your ripping. Buy your wood in bulk, rip down, and then go to size. When we come to a general purpose like this one, three eighths and a half inch, it allows you to do a bit of both. So you can yeah, do your, want, you right? can do your, your straight cutting as long as you're not too over aggressive. And you can also do a shape work as well. So that's quite. This is quite a good blade, then. Really, this yeah. is like kind of more of your, your kind of like um, general. What the general guy, blade. the guy yeah, yeah. in your setup, you're going to jump from one to the other. Yeah. So I, I kind of had the but wrong blade on. Really. The only thing <laughs> to remember, oh, but no, well, you did have a, you had a wider blade. Yeah. On, and yeah. there's no, there's no problem with having the wider blades on, but it's limiting you to it's, yeah. straight cuts more yeah, or less. Yeah, definitely. Not yeah. general purpose. The advantage of having this blade on is, like I said, we can do all the shapes. We can do as bowl blanks and things like that from we're doing as turning. But you've just got to remember the main thing on a bandsaw is protecting this set. And that's what we've done earlier by having the guys in the right position. Because if we're doing a half a dozen ball blanks or more, what's happening is we're turning the circle, we're actually coming in this way. And we're actually going to be pushing on the set on the right hand side of the blade as we're doing it. So why not every now and again just swap over move the fence out of the way and come in from the other side and do your shape that way and that way you're going to get even wear on the set mm. so when you do go back to do a straight cut you've not sort of took too much set from the right hand side and then it's going to wander off what you were saying earlier Nick with a wider blade we've got a bit of a pull on it so yeah. obviously at some point the left side or the right side set had took more wear so the stronger sides took over it started to pull it that way the advantage of the record machine that we were on about earlier is in the wheels at the top, this is cast iron. So it's quite easy when you're, you're looking at it. There's a lot of weight and there's a lot of torque on that wheel. And what you can do quite easily is, like I said, release that tension again if you want to take that off. Open the bottom door. Just slide this out of the way. Take this straight off. And we can go back to the wider blade to do the straight cutting. But then you'd have to make all those adjustments again, wouldn't you? If you're putting the wider blade on, you're going to have to do some fine adjustments to get it in the right position. Yeah. Um, but what I'm going to show you as an add on is the wheel on here. Like I said, there's a lot of weight in this wheel, so you've got grey cast iron wheels above and below. So once the motor's got the machine up and running, the torque or the weight of these wheels takes over. So it's not putting a big load on the, the actual motor. Hmm. 
the torque or the weight of the wheels is going to do the work for you. So it's going to take some stopping, that's why the motor's got to be braked to stop it another 10 seconds. We can take that off. And you can see the rubber tyre that we've got on here. And again, we've got a scratch pad that we use. And every now and again, you don't have to do this all the time, or we can just clean these rubbers up and just make sure these, we're not getting a glossy finish on there because this is where the blaze got to track. Now, if over a period of time you're going to get a build up of resin, things like that, mm. obviously, build up of sawdust, it's going to start riding across the blade. So every now and again, just keep, keep these clean end of the day. It's not an eye mean so this job, it's just something you've got to do every now and again. But while we've got this off, if you want to come back here, Nick, we can see the mechanism of the quick release when we're going to be taking it up and down on the cam. Which is going to stop you having to wind all the way through the screw and all the way back up every time you're swapping the blade over. Mm. We've got a nice solid rack and pinion system. We're taking the guides up and down. Again, cast iron wheel on the bottom, two speeds. If you're going to bring your plastics, you know like when you're in your pens and you want to rip through your, your sort of small blanks when you're doing your pens, obviously you want to drop the speed down a little bit because what it'll do, it'll allow it to cut the plastic rather than melting it. Because the speed that we're doing the timber at is probably too fast for the plastics and the resins. So we can drop the mm. speed down. Yeah, and you've got a dust extraction port at the bottom. Where's the speed thing? That like that. All we do is we wind with this ratchet angle here. Right. Which loosens this idle pulley. Oh, okay, yeah. And then we can put the belt over from the larger to the smaller diameter or vice versa. Okay, alright, oh, okay. So it gives us the, the different belt, speeds. Alright. Yeah. Oh, so would you put the, the small onto the smaller one for doing the resin one? Yeah, the, sm the slower speeds for like your resins and your plastics and things like that. Because obviously if you're going too fast, as the tooth configuration's cutting it, you're going to burn and rub it and it's going to melt onto the blade. So we can right. just slow it down a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. Gives it a nicer, cleaner cut. The limit switches on the doors here. So while we've got the doors open, the machine can't be operated. Yeah. You've got the key on the on the door that locks into that. Oh, yeah. Same on the top. We have a micro switch on the top for safety. But it's a nice solid frame. We've got a double spine on here. So what that allows us to do, we're actually tensioning the blade and not the machine. A lot of the cheaper models, what you'll find is there's no sort of strength in the frame. And as you're tensioning the blade up, you're going to be actually pulling the frame together. Yeah, right. So that's when you get the vibration through the machine and you get bouncing and things like that. When you've got a double spine, plenty of torque and the cast iron wheels. Like you said, this is the largest one in the record family uh, before you jump up to a, a start right one. When you jump into start right, you've got thicker gauge material, heavier wheels, industrial motors. Yeah got in the back of the wheel here these are balancing like they do on a clutch plate so the wheels being actually balanced so oh, okay. when it's actually running round it's a nice true rotation drop that back down thanks so much to Craig uh, from record power for coming down today to no problem. Uh, show us the uh, well, show me how to use my bandsaw, <laughs> and uh, which has been really helpful actually for me, anyway. And I really do hope that it's been helpful for you guys. So, uh, thanks very much to Craig. Thanks, Nick.